Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this meeting of the Infrastructure, Safety and Growth Scrutiny Committee on the 19th of February 2024. Just a reminder for everybody that the meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube. Um, apologies for the meeting. I've received apologies from Councillor Jones. I don't think there's anybody else missing, is there? That's brilliant. Thank you. Um, item two, then, is minutes of the previous meeting. Has everybody had a chance to look at them? And are we happy that they're... Benny's happy to move it a seconder. And all those in favour who are actually here? Lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that. Right, item three then, declarations of interest. Can I ask if there are any interests that need to be declared for this meeting? No, silence. That's brilliant. <clears throat> So um, I'd like to thank the committee for coming to this extra meeting that we've put in. I know it, you know, it wasn't in your calendar in the first place. And also to welcome councillors Harper and Turner as new members of our group, replacing councillors Clement and Oates. Item five, responses to reports to the ISAG community um, scrutiny committee. So further to the recommendations that we made at our last meeting on the 17th of January, I attended Cabinet on the 1st of February about um, the um, report Ending Plastic Pollution, <clears throat> where we, we asked for a recommendation for the Cabinet to look at a feasibility of a trial to strategically site some dual-use bins around the town with ongoing communications to explain and encourage the correct use. And I'm pleased to say that Cabinet approved that recommendation. So we'll be looking to see um, the installation of that and then we will put in, in, that, in the diary for this um, committee to have a look and see how that's going, whether it's working. So we'll request an update for that. Um, I also attended Cabinet to share the three recommendations that this committee made around the Future High Street Fund project. The... Um, Recommendations were considered and agreed that they would that the cabinet would provide a written response, which we haven't had yet. No, have we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So once this is received, I'll share this with the committee, and um, we'll see where we go from there. Oh, also, a, another thing that came out of that meeting was it was agreed that I could attend board meetings for the future high street funds as a non-voting member, so we'll be able to get. Um, bit more information and consideration of everything. So item six, consideration of matters referred to the ISAG scrutiny committee from cabinet or council. There were none of these. So item seven, which you have papers for, is the update on fire safety across the council assets. And this is a written report from Paul Weston, yeah. who unfortunately can't be with us tonight. But I'm sure you'll agree it's quite comprehensive. I've gone through it line by line today, which is the second time I've seen it, actually. And I, I do feel that, um, it, yeah, it's very easy to read and very easy to understand. I have got a question, actually. So what will we do so with we'll questions? We'll take them away. Um, right. We'll call Officer Sack or get a written response. Yeah, I mean, if anybody wants to make comments or questions that we can take back to Paul to ask. I'd got an issue <clears throat> on page 12, the legal risk implications background. And it's about, it's a bit, a bit about leaseholders. And it wasn't very clear to me what the issues around leaseholders was. So I wanted that explaining. Has anybody else got anything from that report? Everybody managed to a good look at it so we have a recommendation then that the committee notes and endorses the contents of this report Ben's proposing seconder Lewis all those in favor thank you so item eight then the local plan progression options so I would like to Welcome Richard and Laura, who've come along to talk to us about this. And we have Sam here as the um, Cabinet member. Would you like to 
we go into talking through, please, Sam first. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> yeah, I just thought I'd, um, before handing over to the officers, provide some historical context, because there's quite a lot. Um, so, first of all, the report does mention new system quite often. So just to break that down, that basically means new rules for the local plan. Um, and this is wrapped up within the levelling up and regeneration bill, which, by the way, we are constantly in a state of waiting for further updates. Uh, current local plan was adopted in 2016 and covers the period to March 2031. <coughs> 2018, the government introduced legislation that requires all local plans to be reviewed every five years. In 2020, Tamworth Borough Council undertook a review of the current local plan. And further to that review, it was decided a new local plan was required. That would include policies that required change. So we also have, so we have the local development scheme and I was just gonna go through the timeline. So this is what it currently is. So the issues and consultation, oh, sorry, the issues and options consultation, that's already happened, that was about a year ago. Um, and then we have the uh, preferred option consultation, uh, which is early this year. And that will probably be picked up a little bit more in detail by Richard when we go for the options or when he mentions the options. Um, and then finally, the date set for the end of 2025 is the submission to the planning inspectorate that's the, the draft submission. Um, so that is in contrast to some extent to what the government has set as the transitionary arrangements. Uh, so this is kind of where it gets into the dates. So the, the current transitional arrangements are for the submission of the plans to be by the end of June 2025. Um, and then the 31st of December, 26 for plans to be adopted so i suppose my key takeaway is the current local development scheme submission is currently planned for the late 2025 uh, and, and is crucially after the transition arrangements and the other thing i was going to mention was because we had a local plan uh, working group and this was discussed and to be totally transparent um those on the local plan working group options for those that were there. Options four and five were the other way round, so I don't want anybody confused. <laughs> so um, if that's okay, I can hand over to officers. Thanks. Oh, can I just ask, does anybody want us to go through the recommendations in detail, or we are, yeah, I can do that, or are we happy that we've seen them? Okay, yeah, so uh, there are five of them currently. Um, <clears throat> so effectively, as, as, as Councillor Smith said, they, we went through these options with the local plan working group uh, and they, they are in a slightly different order to anybody who saw that just because it made sense for the narrative. So uh, the first option considered here is um, to continue with the current approach. So uh, as we said, the the current local development scheme sets out a timetable for submission of the plan, which will be after the end of the transition rearrangements. So in theory, if, if everything goes as the government intends it to go, then we will reach the point of submission for examination with a plan that then wouldn't pass through the examination. So for that reason, um, it wasn't considered the best option to carry on with the new approach, and that's why we were looking for an alternative. So uh, the second option was to just pause the plan progress until further notice pending more details coming through from the government about the new approach and then basically pick up the new approach. Um, but there's there's no guarantee that, the, that that information will come out in a reasonable time. And even beyond that, there's mention of sort of uh, pilot authorities potentially. And so that it might be that it could, could be a significant length of time before we're able to then progress a plan and then have one adopted and in place. And as the current plan only runs to 2031 and it's already uh, it's already got some policies that are that are you know old and not not quite in accordance with um, uh, national policies and guidance. That's that's probably not the best option because we could end up down the line without a plan effectively. Um, 
So the option that we were looking at previously was to de delay the timetable by six months uh, and wait for the further guidance. But as that guidance hasn't been coming out recently, um, we, we sort of run into the same sort of situation as pausing and picking it up again later that, that we'll be into potentially new plan system, new plan making system, and that that might again delay having a new plan in place for so long that we, um, that we end up in a difficult situation when it comes to determining planning applications. So then we come on to the, the two better options, which were uh, the, the, the two choices that were um, mainly discussed at the local plan working group. Um, and they, are, they were to do an update to the plan uh, now. Uh, so to update the, the least well-performing parts of it and the bits that most were most in need of change and then look to do a whole new plan um, when the new system is implemented. Uh, and that was the preferred option um, from the local plan working group, which we said we'd go away and have a look at uh, and see if that, see how that worked. And so the, um, <clears throat> the sort of looking into the detail of that, we'd sort of come to the conclusion that that's uh, maybe not as good an option as it first appeared uh, on the basis of the end date again of the plan. Um, so one of the significant issues with it is that um, national policy says that new local plans should have at least 15 years to run at the date of adoption. And depending on when, when this was adopted, you're looking at sort of six years, five years to run. So as it's only policy, there's a possibility that we that this could be argued around, basically. But we'd be, in, again, in the position of having to do a new plan immediately to make sure that we didn't run out of time at the end of this one. Um, and the, the alternative option there is to sort of extend the end date of the plan. But by extending the end date of the plan, we'd be effectively having to do the same amount of work as doing a whole new plan. Um, so for that reason, that one, that one, we came to the conclusion was not quite as preferable as the final option on the list, option five, which is to basically try to get a new plan in place under the current arrangements and basically condense the timetable down so that we can get a plan submitted by the June 20, 2025, uh, transition arrangements deadline. So the only way to do that is to basically omit the next stage of consultation, which is non-statutory. Um, so we don't, we're not, by not including that, we wouldn't be putting at risk the plan being found sound at examination. Uh, and it would basically allow us to condense the timetable just enough basically to be able to get into examination by the June 2025 deadline. So obviously the, the drawback of this is one less sort of formal stage of consultation, but it's something that we can, we can perhaps pick up uh, um, during the development with a series of sort of smaller engagement um, exercises rather than having to work towards one formal consultation that goes out and we wait for responses and deal with the responses like that. We just, we could probably just be a little bit more agile about how we engage um, to be able to sort of skip over that step. So we, we sought some legal advice on that and the legal advice came back as saying it's non-statutory so that shouldn't be an issue. Um, the only problem would be that if uh, somebody felt that it hadn't been positively prepared and were prepared to challenge the plan on that basis, um, but that is unlikely. Uh, and also we spoke to the planning inspectorate who would be the um, body that would examine the plan, uh, the draft plan. Um, and their, their advice to us was that um, uh, omitting that step wouldn't be an issue in terms of um, soundness or whatever, because uh, as long as as long as we didn't say we were going to do it and then not do it, in which case it would be a problem. But as long as we're clear that we're not going to do it uh, and then we don't do it, it, then they wouldn't. We couldn't be judged on having not done it, if that makes sense. When we get to the end point, um, <clears throat> so all things considered, um, and bearing in mind that was basically a very similar amount of work to doing an update to the new plan and then having to do a, uh, a new plan afterwards. Uh, the recommendation effectively is to is to go with that approach uh, and try to push push on and get a new plan in place uh, before the transition arrangements. There is obviously a possibility that um, that deadline would be pushed back because the new plan we're still waiting for the detail of the new planning system to be uh, introduced and consulted on. Um, so there is obviously a possibility that that deadline could get pushed back. In which case, there's always the possibility to explore whether we you know, take a bit longer and do any other formal consultation stages later. But uh, uh, with the information we have available to us at the minute, we, we sort of consider this to be the best 
approach. So um, the recommendations that will be going to uh, Cabinet on Thursday uh, will be to approve the revised approach to the development of the new plan and to approve the publication of the appended documents, which are the um, updated local development scheme, which sets out the new timetable that we're proposing to work to, and the uh, an updated statement of community involvement, because the, the current one references an additional stage of consultation. So just so it's clear in there um, that that stage isn't happening, um, that, that would be updated, um, so that, that wouldn't be an issue at the end of the process either. <clears throat> so the recommendations for this evening <clears throat> are seeking uh, the committee's endorsement to um, <clears throat> take those recommendations to cabinet. Thanks. Any questions? Has anybody got any questions? Thank you very much. That's very, uh, very um, enlightening and um, very, very useful. Um, I don't think there are any particular issues that we need to look at. Cabinet will obviously be scrutinised and looking at that. So uh, uh, that seems absolutely fine from, from where I sit anyway. then right <laughs> go back to my pages of questions that I've got um, just from what you've been saying about that last option because I'd sat in on the thing where we went through the options before so we're talking about taking one bit of consultation out what does that consultation bit actually look like that we're not doing um, so who is it who wouldn't have been consulted is there any chance at all of it being of the government stuff coming through earlier or are we thinking that it's because of <laughs> what's happening that it's just being pushed further and further into the long grass do we have any timetable at all for the guidance to be coming through uh, okay so on the first question um effectively the the sort of the sort of usual approach by uh, councils developing a local plan is you have the two statutory stages of consultation which is one is the issues and options effectively where you sort of outline um, what the plan might entail and it's a quite high level so sort of, these are the sort of things we're going to look at and then the next statutory stage is a draft plan that people have chance to comment on effectively and on the um, prior to uh, to um, examination so there's an in-between step that is, is common practice which is the preferred options consultation which is sort of where you're refining your approach so initially you would if you had a lot of potential uh, issues and potential options you would explore them in the first stage and then the second stage when you've refined that a bit you say this is what we intend to do so that's sort of the step that would be missing um but usually it's a sort of formal here is a here's a big document that's been prepared that sets out the preferred options for the various things and then goes out to consultation for like six weeks and then you collect all the responses and then you, you sort of go based on those responses help you refine your, your, your draft version of the plan so effectively that's the step that we've been missing we put the issues and options one out and because obviously we due to the size of the borough we were sort of limited in options on a lot on a lot of um the issues that needed addressing it was quite it was quite focused at that point um so the only the, the sort of stage that would be missing is a bit more of a this is definitely the sort of approach that we'd be taking forward but as i said we we can be looking at sort of slightly different different ways of engaging with people to make sure that you know people are still able to input into that process um and on the second question about is there any further information uh no we did have a meeting before christmas with some people from the government department and tried to press them on that point and their response was this is the timetable we are working to um, so they're anticipating putting out more information on the new process um, over the course of the year, but they weren't able to tell us specifically when. That's how busy they are, doesn't it? <laughs> no, that, thank you for that explanation. I feel comfortable with that now, that we've got the two statutory ones, and as long as they're comprehensive, that's, that's fine. Um, has anybody got anything? What was, sorry if I can just go down, I've got something from page 28, I was, oh it was, 
Um, oh, yeah, this, this one I really didn't understand. On the, um, I think it's your communications plan, which looks really good. But then there's a, a bit on page 28, resources. And it's got a chart of officer time. And, yeah, my question is, like, um, planning policy and delivery officer, 90%. Is that 90% of their time for ever, or is it for a, a set amount of time? Are we saying that this is their role, this is all that they will be working on? Yeah, effectively, it's in terms of making sure that we can deliver what we're trying to deliver and that we've got the appropriate resources to do it. But obviously, um, there, are other, there are other tasks to complete that are outside of this, and, you know, in terms of our workload. So, like, um, consultations to neighbouring authorities and helping the development management team on their on dealing with planning application and things. So that's why it's that's why it's ninety percent. It's predominantly most of the job, but there are there are other bits. And so for example, so you know, assistant director growth and regens in there at five percent because she will she will be she will be contributing a little bit, but obviously she has a huge area of responsibility to to deal with. So yeah, that that's that's why those percentages are, are as they are. That looks good. Well, there's a dedicated team there, isn't there, to put this together and make sure it works. So, yeah, thank you. Does anybody have... Yeah, Paul? Sorry, I'll switch the mic on. So have you got extra capacity that you can call on ad hocly or whenever you decide or feel that you've run out of the capacity but you still need the deadline? Because my concern here is if you've already uh, flagged up that you are struggling with the capacity, A, is it fit for purpose, that, organize, that, that team, strategically looking at how long this is going to take to do, should we not resource it accordingly? And if that's the case, what is the resource plan? Thank you. Uh, yeah, so um, oh, perhaps it needs a little bit of clarification there. But this, so it's the the small size is referring to the permanent members of staff. So what we have got is one temporary staff member who uh, was due to finish in, at the end of March, um, but we've just had a business case approved to extend that temporary post using existing budgets, basically, to. Uh, June 2025 to make sure that we've got that extra resource all the way up to the point of submission in theory. So, yes, yeah, so I think it says the size of the team has been temporarily increased to meet the demand and be more resilient. I mean, it is still it is still small, and obviously on on a lot of the the evidence based work, we will be having to um, instruct consultants to help us out on that. Whether the experts and can do it um, faster than if we you know attempted to do some of it in house, but uh, that is. That is what we're working with at the minute. The extra, the, the temporary post is included in the, the resources table as well as another 90% planning assistant temporary. That is till June 2025. So that's the extra resource we've got currently. Um, there's no other plan for additional resources at the moment. Okay, thank you for that. I mean, it, obviously, you, you know, it's difficult to, to, to look to the future long term, but if it's 2025 and these things start to slip, and also with the, the current um, impending increase in work, do you really think that's enough in, the, in not just time, but quantity as well? Uh, it should be, um, just because this has been the plan for a while. We have been working on the sort of new plan previously until it sort of took a little bit of a pause while we were waiting for the further guidance so this is effectively just we're gonna squeeze a bit you know we're gonna squeeze a bit more in but we're, uh, we're, we're doing that by cutting out that one stage that would have been a lot of preparing of the documentation and things so it, that's that's basically how we're squeezing it in the the current resources were proposed to do the plan over the period that it was before so it should be obviously 
you know, unforeseen circumstances aside, it should be okay because what we're doing is taking out a little bit of that more formal workload to be able to move the timetable around. And so it's slightly less work over, the, over a shorter time period, if that makes sense. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, yeah, I do get it. That obviously, if you're capacity managing from your manpower plan and you've taken bits out and you're saying it should be and hope to be, that's not where we should be really, is it? We should have a bit of capacity left in it, not over overstretched it already. So uh, that's my, just my concern. Um, and one last question I've got for you then. Um, this is going to Cabinet on Thursday. So presumably, should that go through, work will start straight away to try and hit that deadline then? Uh, yeah, I mean we're already we're already working on we're already working on the process as it is because obviously there's a lot of there's a lot of work that goes on in, in the background and effectively we, we, what we would have been doing instead is working towards this document for consultation, but instead we're, we're sort of working on evidence gathering and all those kind of things. So yeah, it's underway already. Thank you for that. Um, is everybody? Oh, Rosie. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, you mentioned in the last answer or the answer before um, the use of consultants. Has the costing for that been worked out and factored into everything? And if so, what is it? Uh, there is an estimated cost. Uh, let me just scroll back up to the resource implications bit. Uh, yeah, so um, our estimated cost previously for the whole thing um, came out at about 375,000. Um, that's based on market research and other councils that have been through the process recently. A significant chunk of that cost is in paying for an examination um, and the time that the uh, inspector is involved in that. Um, there is currently a retained fund of approximately £215,759 um, that is from underspends in previous years when we were going to go through this process before and delayed it a bit. Um, obviously that maths doesn't quite add up, so once we get closer to the examination and we know a bit more about how much that will cost, then yeah, there might have to be a policy change for the 2025-26 financial year. Um, to make sure that there's enough money to go through the examination process. Yeah. Is everyone content then with what we've heard? Thank you so much for talking us through that. So we are being asked to endorse the recommendation to be made to Cabinet to approve the revised approach to the development of the new local plan for Tamworth and approve the publication of the updated local development scheme and statement of community involvement. Do I have a proposal? Lewis, a seconder? Ben, all those in favour? Thank you for that. If, we're quite happy if you want to uh, get off now. <coughs> Thanks. Right, item nine then, the forward plan. Uh, is there anything the committee has seen on that that they'd like to put on our full bar to review? Nothing jumping out at anybody? Right, number 10, and this just seems to be going nowhere and we really need to do something with it. Working group updates. Um, my thought on number one, the migrant traveller ones, I haven't put another date in the diary. Uh, just on travellers, I'm sure everybody's been reading their emails for the last week on our daily updates about um, the travellers at the cinema. Um, I'd just like to congratulate officers on how that's gone. The, it just seems that we've dealt with everything this time very responsibly. responsibly. <clears throat> the travellers who turned up um, engaged with the police, engaged with the council, they, they knew exactly what they were doing, when they were going to go. They, they asked for the black bags and everything. I know there's always a clean-up after these things, but it seems as if 
you know, this has been done very well. And I'd just like to say thank you to the officers who um, who did look after that and who ensured that it, it went as well as it could. <clears throat> so I will look to, um, in the next couple of weeks, to get us a, a date in the diary for that. The other one, Ben, is the HGV drivers. Can we... Yes, apologies, Chair. I've, I've been ill. Um, yeah, well, I think this is and, our trouble. Uh, we've all been um, dazed. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, and I think we've had a change of membership of the committee again since um, we last discussed who was going to be on that subcommittee. So I think it's only me and yourself left out of the last makeup of that. So I don't know if anybody else wants to jump on it. Um, assuming there are more members or not, I'll email out in the next week or so to set a date. Is there any other members of the um, committee would like to be looking at this? It's facilities for HGB drivers in Tamworth. Anybody happy to sit on that? Rob? Yeah, that'll do fine. That's brilliant. Then I'll wait for you to um, chuck me some dates through. Thanks for that. So work plan item 11. Um, our next meeting is on the 22nd, 21st of March. can't even read what's here. And it had been proposed, um, or well, it was on the plan that we'd get a future high street funds um, update. But as that's going to full council at the end of February, we're proposing that we take that off our um, meeting because it will everybody will have had the chance to discuss it. At full council, so is committee happy with that that we remove it? Yeah, it will come back again. Yeah, but just for this time. Yeah. But we've got the community safety partnership update, and oh, the CCTV TV update as well, and dual stream, which seems to come round very, very, very quickly. So that's good. So, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I seem to remember at a previous meeting, Councillor Summers mentioned about having a trip out to see the CCTV, but I haven't done anything else, and I think that would be useful now if we could get that uh, on board, please. No, I'd put down that I wanted to go, and that, that was the last I heard of it, yeah. So it would be good to get that in. <clears throat> right, and... We've got this document that's gone round because we were talking about. Uh, was it at our last meeting? No, it was at the end of the meeting. Oh, right. Yeah. The, um, the issue of bulky waste. So I think the form that um, Leanne's sent round is about what kind of questions we want to ask because there, was, there seemed to be some anomalies. Yes, <laughs> yeah, sort of what, what the <laughs> on what was there. Want, yeah. And, and any specific information they want to request. Yeah, so if people could let Leanne know what um, what they're thinking about, what questions it is that we're wanting and what the outcome is. I think, for me, it's probably a, re a review of how that system works because, it, yeah, it had some really weird bits to it. And it's about getting that um, data behind it, isn't it, of how much we think fly tipping is linked to the issues around bulky waste. Obviously, if you've got a three-piece, um, a corner settee, there's no one to take it away. So, yeah. So we'll um, we'll look at... When are we looking at getting that? We'll get it on in. the start of the next meeting. Oh, I mean, right. I'm happy to take things now. If yeah, has anybody got anything after looking at that form that they'd like to... for Leanne to... Yeah, yeah. yeah email me. Make sure you do. I'm pretty sure it was Councillor Cook who was had a lot of questions on this um, when he was on the committee oh, right. um, only because I've just read about the corner suite and I remember him talking about it in the yeah, meeting yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know yeah. if it's worth asking it, it him. did come to you on about Danny Danny yeah yeah it, it he was here wasn't he yeah. at the last meeting yeah. yeah and there was there was just so many things that didn't seem common sense to it that's why we've we've asked for it to be looked at so that is all that we've got on. Thanks, everyone, for your attendance. And I'm going to close. Oh, sorry, Councillor. Thank you, Chair. I beg your pardon. Um, I'm not sure if this is particularly the, the right um, area to, to mention this, but um, it's something, um, it's a bit like coming home, really, because the last time I sat on uh, 
on ISAG was April last year. So it's I've sort of had a sabbatical for uh, for the duration of the mayorship. But it's nice to be home, and uh, uh, it's nice to be here. Um, I'm afraid that the subject that I'm going to be I want us to raise, with the possibility of adding it to a work plan, is the thorny old problem of potholes and trees. In my own ward uh, of Bowl Hall, which I know, Chair, you are involved with too, the, the, the situation is now becoming intolerable. The roads are becoming impassable because of, um, because of the, the situation of the roads. The trees are out of control. Some work is currently being done on the trees, but I feel that um, this the subject really, on a town-wide um, scale, needs scrutinising, and we need to be talking to Staffordshire County Council about the plans that they have, how they implement them, the timescales they have, because I'm getting constituents ringing up, texting me, saying when, when are these trees going to be cut? When are these um, potholes going to be filled in? How are they going to be filled in? Because I've seen so many potholes allegedly filled in where it's just dump a bit of tarmac in and then move on, which is of no use to anyone. The situation has got to be resolved. This committee deals with infrastructure, and this is the major problem our town is suffering from at this moment. So I'm not sure what other members may uh, suggest but i think it's something we ought to take up and we ought to be holding staffordshire county council to account and finding out what their plans are to deal with this problem and when um that's uh i think a number one item that we ought to be looking at thank you chair It sounds as if corporate scrutiny have just picked this up. Only the tree part. The tree okay. bit. Um, and as you say, I am inundated. My, the, the pictures on my phone are trees. Yesterday, door knocking, I picked up, you know, an, an issue with trees. And we, we know that it, it's not all within our gift, but I think some of it may be within our gift. And we have to stop this us and them with us and the county where they will say it's nothing to do with us it's the borough and we say it's nothing to do with us it's the county the people out there really don't care they just want the trees around them to be safe not to be cutting out all their light and not to be dropping mess in their gardens so you know it's a quality for me again it's another quality of life thing it may seem quite trivial to some people but if you've got that you know it's cutting out the light in the summer, the leaves coming down in autumn, and then the worry about whether it's going to fall in your garden like it has in our patch, taken out two gardens in um, Manor Road, then it is a big issue and it does need resolving. And people don't need to be living in fear about um, what's happening to the trees. In the main bit of our ward, as I'm sure you know, John, it's where the roots have come up and people in a motorised scooter, it must be like being on a roller coaster. The, the roads are absolutely abysmal and I am in looking at having a meeting with the highways officer this week so but we will see what we can do yeah so where just thinking if we maybe pick those up for two items and yeah. we link in with because I know corporate scrutiny they have yeah. to provide a member briefing or for it to come to scrutiny yeah so if we and we talk we regularly as chairs anyway yeah. so we'll we'll, we'll see sort of where they're going with it Okay. All right, but we, we won't leave it because it is yeah. really, really important. But it may not be that we can get it in this side of um, us closing down for the elections. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, You're absolutely right. This is the number one priority and it's got to be sorted. We cannot. We were talking about this last year when I was on this committee and nothing seems to have been done. It's just got worse. Um, prevarication from the, um, the county council, when I've been in contact with them, they say, oh, it's on a six to seven year cyclical uh, programme. I want to know when this cyclical programme starts and when we're due to have another round 
in our particular ward. And I'm sure other wards want to know as well. We need information. We need to know what they're doing. It's no good just um, saying, well, you're, you're on the list somewhere. We need to know, and we need to be able to tell our constituents when this work is going to be done. Um, the trees are, are going to be full of leaves very shortly. The sap's going to be pouring over people's cars and driveways. The pavements, as you so rightly say, are going to be lifting. This is major infrastructure problems that we're suffering from because, um, well, I mean, we said that they have a six to seven year cyclical program. I think it's more of a six to seven decade uh, program that they work by because these trees have been allowed to... It used to be the situation whereby a tree was not allowed to grow any taller than the houses, the uh, estate trees. That is not the case. The trees are out of control and the county has got to be held to account and they've got to sort the problem. We can't do it, it's their problem, but we've got to make sure that they're doing it through whatever route, Chair, and um, I hope that we, on this committee that we are aware of this problem and that we will, um, that we will endeavour to make it aware to whatever committee is going to be dealing with it that, that it is done and it is a major, major priority. We can't live with this for any longer. Thank you, Chair. No, and I, I agree with everything you've said. The other issue is that when people do complain, they are told they're allowed to cut back. You know, when the trees are hitting their houses, they're told they're allowed to cut back. We should never be telling residents to get up a ladder and cut trees. You know, it's just an absolute disaster. And with regard to the potholes, I can remember doing um, a, leaf, a photo for a leaflet 12 years ago by a pothole in Dumelow's Lane. So, you know, we've not resolved that problem at all. We keep, as you say, we keep sticking a bit of tarmac in them. It lasts for a couple of months and then it all, you know, the next time you go, it's disappeared and it looks exactly the same. We've got to start asking for these things to be done properly. And it can't be beyond the witter man now to be able to put in stuff that actually lasts more than a couple of months. So, yes, we will pick all those up and I will relish that fight. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. You're absolutely right. We want answers. We want someone from county to come here or to whichever committee and answer, tell us why these things aren't happening and when they will be solved. That's what we need, answers. Thank you. And also, sorry to prolong this, but it is a bit of a soapbox issue for me. There's an issue for us in Bowl Hall, where in Dormer Avenue, they've come and they've cut, pollarded, I don't know, half a dozen, a dozen trees, and they haven't done the others. And it's like, why, when you've brought all the equipment, have you left some? Because that's what our residents are moaning to us now, is when are they going to come back and do it again? So, yeah, we will keep on with that. So, thank you to everyone. We are now closing the meeting then at 6.44. Thank you. <laughs>